a pleasant, pleasant, pleasant Friday morning here on Whispering Hope. You know, we're so happy that you're tuned in to us, that you're locked in, and that you have been studying with us for this last few weeks and even months, and some may even be years. We're happy for our loyalists who are on with us every single morning. And so this week, it promises to be an exciting discourse as we culminate what we have been looking at, you know, the Sabbath. How important is the Sabbath in all of this? The Sabbath at the end is the discourse for this week. And so we're so happy that we have Pastor Oriel Joseph in the house just to take us to the climax of this lesson today, Friday. You know, we have looked at worshiping the creator, the hour of his judgment, good news of the judgment. Fear God and give glory to him, the everlasting gospel. A moment of destiny. Jesus went and said the loses. And so we're here looking at the Sabbath and the end. So good morning, Pastor Joseph. Welcome to Whispering Hope. I'm going to invite you to greet us here. And I'm going to ask you to pray. And then we'll jump into the discussion for Friday's lesson. Uh, good morning to everyone. Again, it's a joy to be with you on our final installment of the lesson for this week. I pray that you have enjoyed all of the sessions in the earlier days of this week and that you were blessed. Being able to immerse yourself in the lesson has brought you joy, understanding, and freedom. Uh, and so this morning, I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us bow our heads at this time so, as we pray. Loving God and our Heavenly Father, we commit all things into your hand. We give you praise, honor, and glory because it's due to you. And we ask all that you'll forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. This morning, I ask that you will be with all those who are viewing with us, that you'll bless them, that you'll strengthen them, that you will cover them and protect them and shield them. We pray also that your Holy Spirit will be upon them today, that as we open your word, that he will give us understanding of what is revealed to us. Um, uh, Father, we also want to ask directly that for those who are sick, going through pain and anguish and disappointment that somehow you reach out to them and touch them and, and bring restoration and healing and comfort and deliverance to them so that they can strengthen their faith and have a testimony of your goodness, your mercy, and your faith. I pray that you'll be our host this morning, that you'll bless her in a very special way. Grant us your peace now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Something exciting and new is happening here on Whispering Hope. Traditionally, on a Friday morning, we discuss questions sent in by you or viewers. But you know, you're so special, and we just don't want to give you a one-line answer. And so we have dedicated a whole half an hour just to answer your questions every Friday evening at 6.30 here on Whispering Hope. You know, it segues after into inverse, but we're so happy that for half an hour, from 6.30 on Friday evenings, that you can, you know, get the answers to those burning questions. So, Elder Rodney Smith and all of you, I need to tell and all of you sending your questions weekly and daily, we have separated the question and answer section just to give a little bit more explanation. So, feel free. We invite you to comment, we invite you to send in your questions, and we're always happy here on Whispering Hope to be that light in our dark world. So again, please remember, 6.30 this evening, tune in, log on to Whispering Hope, where our question and answer segment will be featured. The first, yes, we have done it every Friday, but we are just going to have a little bit more excitement as we answer the questions. Some of them are a little technical and we need more you know information and more research and we don't have enough time in the morning session to get that done so a half an hour for you and we just want to let you know that we appreciate your questions but most importantly we appreciate you all right so this week we look at the sabbath and the end and pastor joe we're going to look at our memory text and again i'm going to ask you to comment and then we're going to go into our discussion on the friday and our memory text comes from Ephesians 3, 9. And it says, And to make all see, what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. 
Pastor Joseph, share with us what is the meaning behind this text or what is your understanding of it? For me, I think Paul is saying that the mystery of, of, of the fellowship, the experience that we have in Jesus Christ is something that has been preserved through the ages, through eternity. Well, not through eternity, but since the foundation of the world began, God had willed it that Jesus Christ would come, would be the answer to the sin problem. And that mystery is now being revealed in Jesus Christ. But even more so, the Apostle Paul reminds us that the one in whom this mystery was hidden for ages yeah. is the one who is the creator of all things through Jesus Christ. And so it is important for us to understand because the Apostle Paul synchronizes with Genesis 1 and also with John chapter 1, where God moved upon the face of the deep, uh, and we see God, the Spirit, and the Son, um, when God says, let us make man in our own image. And then in John, as John declares, that it, in the beginning, Jesus was, and that without him, nothing was created that was created. You know, all things were made by him. And here, Paul emphasizes the same point. In other words, Paul is linking our redemption or salvation with the whole idea of God's creation. So God created us, and as a result, hidden in the mystery was that even though sin would come, that God would pay the ransom price for our sin, restoring us back to where we were before. And that's the beauty that our lesson introduces us to today. Amen, amen, amen. You know, why do we worship? Hmm. That's a big question. Who do we worship? Even bigger question. We worship God simply because he's the creator. You know, Revelation 4.11 says, For you created all things. And interestingly, Revelation 14.7 says, Worship him who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and springs of water. And Pastor Joseph, this sounds very familiar to me. This sounds like Exodus 20. You know, when we look at the Ten Commandments, particularly the fourth one, which says, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. And this week we looked at the Sabbath and the end. And you know, the truth is, if we were observing the Sabbath from its inception, since creation, even now, in this 21st century, we would not have an atheist, we would not have an evolutionist, we wouldn't have any of those things. Because in the center of the fourth commandment, God identifies the fact that he's owner of this world. He created it. He places his seal upon this whole creation in the fourth commandment. And so we are called to worship him because he is creator of all things. And so Pastor Joe, so some questions for you to help to enlighten us here on Whispering Hope. How does the message of the Sabbath answer the great questions of life, such as, where did I come from? Why am I here? And what is my eternal destiny? So clearly, the first angel reminds us, uh, or the first messenger reminds us, that we were created. And every time we think of creation, we think of the culmination of creation, which is the day that God set aside to memorialize what he had done the previous six days. So whenever we come to the point where we remember and memorialize the creation of heaven and earth, the sea and the fountains of living water, we are reminded that we were created by God. So the Sabbath plays a pivotal point in reminding us that we came into existence at the will of God that through him that we were formed and you know i keep saying that you know we were the special act of his creation because he took time out to hold us in his hand to mold us to form us to shape us and then he placed his breath of life in us so that the dust plus his breath 
would make us a living soul. Uh, and you know, we have been studying that for the last couple of months in our Sabbath school time, that God took time out to become very intimate and personal with us in our creation. So that whenever we experience the Sabbath, we ought to remember how we got here, created with the hand of God, given life through the breath of God. Why are we here? Because the Bible makes it abundantly clear that we were created for his honor, for his glory. We are created so that we can give praise and adoration to him. It is important for us to understand that. So important is creation to him is that he was willing to say even before we were created that if something goes wrong with us, he would take full responsibility for restoring us back to who we ought to be in Jesus Christ. And so that is important. Also important is that the Sabbath reminds us that our life doesn't end with this time, but that there is a Sabbath beyond. And Isaiah very much reminds us of that in Isaiah 58, that there is going to be a, a new heaven and from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, we will all come and worship God. Yes, the Sabbath is a reminder of the fact that we were created by God and we are special to him. Two, that he created us for his glory, for his praise, because the Sabbath is a time when we take time out to spend time with him, to, to commune with him, to fellowship with him, to reason with him, to learn more about him, to experience him in his fullness and his beauty, unlike any other day. You know, in the Sabbath, he had set aside for that particular purpose, in, and that is why he sanctified it and he blessed it, so that it would be unlike any other day. And so, so we can celebrate the fact of the Sabbath, because in celebrating the fact of the Sabbath, we celebrate God, we celebrate his creative, his creative power, and we celebrate the fact that we are unique and special to him. And we also celebrate the fact that one day we are going to spend eternity with him. Amen. You know, Pastor Joseph, just some consideration. It says, dwell on the marvel of creation. And not just creation, but dwell on the miracle of our own existence in this vast universe. What should the fact that the prime memorial of this creation, the Sabbath, comes to us as opposed to us going to it every week without exception, teach us about how important the doctrine of creation is? When you consider the, the vastness of the, the universe, I, you know, I like to reflect on, on Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. I like to reflect on Psalm 8. When I consider the heavens, uh, the moon and the stars without God ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? You know, in, in these passages, I see the expression or I see the thought of the vastness, the expanse of the universe. In, in, in Psalm 8, the psalmist is trying to give us a picture that, you know, that in comparison to earth, that the universe is so vast and expansive that light, the speed at which light travels is measured in years, you know, and, and he says, when you consider that, and you consider the puniness of our earth, and even the, the puniness of man himself, why is it that God gets excited about, about that? And, and so it shows us that our creation is special to God. As a matter of fact, in that very same psalm, psalm the psalmist declares that he made us a little lower than Elohim and crowned us with glory and honor. In other words, we are, we are special in the creative process of God. And so that in itself tells us that God is particular in helping us to remember and be reminded of the fact that we are the creature of his hand, that we are special and unique to him, and that in all of the universe, he looks down on us in awe and appreciation and anticipation expectation of who we ought to become in terms of who we ought to become and our relationship with him. And that's the extent to which the creation is important. And, as, uh, and to that extent, the Sabbath that speaks 
to us weekly um, of the creative power and process of our creator God must stand as being significant in the entire universe as a time when God stopped, acted, and out of it emerged those who were made in his image. And so we ought to celebrate the Sabbath. And the Sabbath stands out as an exception to all those who might oppose God, to an exception for those who um, even might believe in evolution, all the theistic evolutionists and all the Darwinian. The Sabbath stands out as a condemnation of what is simply a theory and establishes what is truly a fact. Amen. You know, as you're talking about the universe and its greatness, we can never forget the greatness of the universe is God. You know, last week's lesson particularly paid attention to the sun. It says it has a diameter of 865,000 miles. It also says that the sun can hold one million planets the size of Earth. And if you're not blown away by that, it talks about this pistol star, which gives off 10 million times, not just 1 million, but 10 million times the power generated by our sun. And 1 million stars the size of the sun could fit in this pistol star. When we see the greatness of the universe, but yet still a loving God, was willing to die for us. It talks of an amazing love. A love that we should never ever take for granted. And the Sabbath, as we're looking at, is a memorial that he is creator, a weekly indicator, a weekly anniversary, telling the whole universe that God is creator. And so my follow-up question for you, Pastor Joseph. In Daniel 3 and Daniel 6, I don't know if we have time to go into that, but how do you see the issue of worship being played out in these inspired accounts? So let's tell us what Daniel 3 is about and Daniel 6 is about, and then you can answer the question. Yeah, for those of us who are Bible students, for those of you who are Bible students, you'll remember Daniel 3, which is the, the whole story of the image of gold. And the fact that people were called to worship this image and that the image was set up in defiance of what God says. So we learned something that there was a time, Daniel 3, when something was set up in place of God or in defiance of God. And folks were asked to give adoration and glory and acceptance to what was placed or established to be in place of or in defiance of God. It was a challenge to God himself that he did not have the power to accomplish what he said he was. God did say that, hey, listen, I'm giving you an indication that there are going to be four, uh, four, five kingdoms that there's going to be head of gold, breast and thing of uh, silver, belly and tie as brass and leg of iron. Uh, and then there's going to be a fifth kingdom that is cut out without hand. And that's going to be the, the extent of the kingdoms that rule the world. And that was God's decree. In defiance of that, Nebuchadnezzar says, listen, my kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom. Therefore, God, God says that image is, is gold, silver, bronze, and iron. And I'm going to say that the, sil the, the image is all gold. I'm going to set it up and everybody must worship what I set out, what I indicate that each image should be an embrace that concept. And so as a result, we find that the three Hebrew boys stood out by saying, we will not bow. We will not pay homage to the image. We will not stand in defiance of God. We will serve God no matter what. And they said, even if we die, we're still going to serve God because we know the God that we serve. Uh, so it is that also in, in Daniel 6 with Darius, where he was brought into a situation where he established a law that says nobody should pray or give homage to any other God but the God of Babylon and, and, and Darius himself. 
and, and Daniel stood in defiance of that and was cast into the to the lion's den. So that we see the trend that whenever the enemy comes up against God, he brings up something that stands in defiance of God or something that goes contrary to what God has established and expect that the entire domain would worship and accept what is being proposed. What we see as with Nebuchadnezzar and the three Hebrew boys, as, as with Darius and with Daniel, that those who stand with God stands always in the truth. And as long as you are with God, you can be defiant against the enemy because God will always be with you. And so as the story says, the three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fiery furnace as a punishment for their defiance of falsehood. And Daniel was thrown in the lion's den for a defiance of the same worship of some other God. They would not accept apostasy as the part they would tread, but they would hold on to God. The good news is that God always stands up in deliverance of his people. And so there is going to come a time when the Sabbath is going to be a symbol of defiance as well. And we see the stages already being set in our world around us. There was a time when the first day of the week was sacred. Sunday was sacred and people were not encouraged to work on it. Today is still somewhat similar, but not with the same power that is pushed behind a bit. But it still is a day where people still insist that, hey, listen, this is the first of the week. You should not worship. But there's going to come a day when actually there will be a global defiance where we all will be expected to act against God and go contrary to God. And blessed be those individuals who would stand up and say that the Sabbath remains forever, perpetually a reminder that God is the creator of the universe. You see, when we are presented with another day other than the seventh day, what is happening is that we are presented with something that man would have instituted, just like Nebuchadnezzar, just like Darius, that man would have put in place to stand in defiance of God. And we need even today to know that the reason why we observe the Sabbath, the reason why we recognize the Sabbath, the reason why we acknowledge the Sabbath is because we acknowledge the fact that we were created in the image of God, that God took seven literal days and created the heavens and the earth, the seas and the fountains of water. It is because of that acknowledgement and nothing that happens in the future should detract us, should undermine us, should hear us from recognizing and acknowledging that God is creator. Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Six days you have to labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day, on the seventh day, you ought to rest from all your work because in it, because of God, why? Because God created the heavens and the earth. And that is how we ought to be. That is how every human being has been called to be and to worship the creator God. And we recognize that some, like those on the plain of Jura, will bow down. Perhaps the majority of them will bow down. But thank God, and may all of us be found faithful, we will remain steadfast to the biblical truth that says the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. You know, Pastor George, it has almost as if you answered our next question, but I'm still going to ask it. What is found in these accounts? The story of the Hebrew boys and Nebuchadnezzar and the story of Daniel and Darius, you know, that can help us prepare and anticipate the challenge God's faithful people will face during the crisis around the mark of the beast. So the fact is that people are going to be called upon to reveal themselves. And that is, you can't be silently living one life and trying to give the impression that you're somebody else. The mark of the beast will be called upon to be displayed. Mentally, you, you, you've got to acknowledge the, the fact that you are on one side or the other. And... 
and I pray God that we all will acknowledge that God is creator of the universe by our observance of the seventh day. The mark of the beast, most of us have accepted and agreed, is going to be reflected as we uh, express ourselves in response to the word of God. And so when sun Sunday or the first day of the week is presented as what we should accept because of the reason of man as versus the declared will of God to accept the seventh day, then it will be truly manifested how we have lived our lives. The interesting thing about, about the plane of Jura, golden image, with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that three of them stood up, but they were not the holy Jews. They were not the holy seven Adventists uh, on the plane of Jura. And yet because of fear, perhaps, or because uh, folks have already been compromised, perhaps, or because some people have been bought into the culture, perhaps, or because some people have position, perhaps, that they bow down because it is easier to bow down today and live tomorrow, you probably can repent. But there are some times in our lives, some moment in our experience, when the die is cast and the decision that we make seals us forever. And it's important for us to always be on the side of God. And Daniel made a decisive decision. You know, coming out of the, the plane of Jura with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the declaration was made that nobody should worship any other God but the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I can imagine that during the time of Darius, there were still some people who were faithful to observe and, and serve the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But at the time of Daniel, you know, only Daniel, well, I mean, they, they were setting him up, so they were watching him and they were they were trying to trap him. But only Daniel stood out in terms of the story as the one who stood in defiance of what was expected. And so it is that even in our time when, when the mark of the beast is being unfurled, it's going to be difficult for some people today who are saying, well, okay, it's okay to get along. It's all right to, to get along. It's going to be difficult for them to step back from that and say, listen, I am standing for this principle. It's always good to stand for the principle all the time because when it's time to really stand up, you will have the backbone. But if you have been vacillating and, and jellyfetching and, and so on, when that time comes, you're not going to be too sure that you want to stand up. So stand in now for the truth. And when the real time comes for you to stand up, you will be able to stand up and overcome in Jesus Christ. The good news is that we don't have to stand in our own strength. We can stand in the strength of our Savior, our Lord, our Advocate, our King Eternal. Amen. Pastor Joe, we want to thank you. You know, the truth is <laughs> that day is coming. We all will be tested. How do you stand? <laughs> it will be the deciding moment. If you have been pretending all the while in church, when you are called upon to stand for God, if you're not anchored, chances are you may bow to the pressures around you, both the circumstances, but we implore us to be faithful, to study the time in which we live. Because the truth is God is about to come. And my final question for you, how do we show someone who believes in the billions of years of evolution as a means of creation, the rationality of keeping the seventh day Sabbath as a memorial of that creation? Because there's some people saying, oh, it's not literal days. That first day was like a million of years and the day too. How do we get them to recognize that, hey, this is irrational thought? Because the Sabbath then would not make any sense if this world was formed in billions of years. Talk to us. It's certainly, you know, it's, it's always a difficult challenge when you have somebody who has accepted a, a falsehood or have rooted themselves in it to then try to pull them out. But here's the reality. Every week, I think globally, for those who have been exposed to Jesus Christ and God and the, the, the 66 book of the Bible, that they have accepted that there is a need to worship God at least one day in a week. 
Um, some people say, well, we do it on the first day because it memorializes the day when the Savior of the world was resurrected. Others say we remember him on the seventh day because that's the day that he told us to remember, right? Because that day is a memorial of his creative work. It's important for us to be able to understand and grasp that, that the Bible sets up the Sabbath as a memorial of his creative work. And the fourth commandment, as we refer to it, keeps on mentioning that in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. So first of all, for those of us who, who would think that the world took billions of years and that one day is really billions. It's tragic that that would be our trend of thought when God says in six days and that on the, the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, we are called to remember him and that we have been doing that for thousands of years, for the last 6,000 years, we have been doing that in recognition that creation took six similar days as the seventh day. Therefore, one could only argue that if you accept one year to be a billion years or, or a million years, that you really would need to celebrate the Sabbath for a million years or a billion years. And, and what day are we in if we're talking billions of years? Because it, it is not yet clear to even those who are proponents of the idea that man himself has been around for a billion years, okay? They might talk about other creatures being around for a billion years, but certainly I'm, I'm not well read in that, but I've not encountered the theory yet that man has been around for a billion years. You know, so so when does a billion year end and when, how do we celebrate the Sabbath? So it, it really puts humor to the fact that you don't want to think that the world took several billion years to be created, but yet still God is calling you to remember it every week and do remember every day that was created. It certainly doesn't make sense. It certainly doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, one would have to come to the conclusion at the end that it really doesn't make any sense to celebrate the Sabbath because if you celebrate the Sabbath, you're really celebrating nothing because the world wasn't created in several literal days. But truly, if you celebrate the Sabbath and you find joy in the Sabbath, it is only because you have embraced the idea that the God that you serve is an awesome God, that the God that you serve is a powerful God, that the God that you serve is an omniscient God, that that God can do anything at any time. And for him to take nothing and create something is truly remarkable and needs celebration. And I'm thankful that it is every seventh day that we get the opportunity to celebrate this marvelous working in our lives of a God who created us, who not only created us, but continues to be the mover and shaker in all that we do. He sustains us. He watches over us. He has redeemed us. And don't forget Deuteronomy, as Deuteronomy reminds us that our deliverance should, our Sabbath should be a reminder of God's deliverance of his people. And so that is something that we ought to embrace and look forward in anticipation for an amazing God. Amen. Pastor Joseph, I really want to thank you for this week's lesson, the Sabbath and the end. You know, <laughs> in the 1840s, when Darwinism took flight, you know, this Big Bang Theory, evolution, it took the world by storm and scientifically, Lots of these scientists <laughs> accepted this fable. Truth be told, it takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does to believe in creation. You see, Whispering Hope, God created this world. There's behind of God, we see an intelligent design. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, the psalmist says. There's no chance about us. The smallest cell shows creativity. It didn't happen by chance. And I want for us to recognize that we serve 
the God who created this world. Genesis 1, 1 still rings through. True. In the beginning. In the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. It tells us of a God who not only created us, but a God whose love for us was so enduring that even when our foreparents sold our planet Earth, Jesus came as a babe, moved from being our creator to our redeemer. He hanged on a cross. He saw Orville, he saw Makeda, he saw Edson, he saw you struggling under the burdens of sin. And he decided to die. Truth is, with the spring hope, the end is near. How will you stand? Will you stand up for right? Or will you stand up for error? I implore you today, choose you this day whom you will serve. I say like Joshua, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And before we go, I just want to remind you that this thing at 6.30, 6.30 p.m. sharp, we will be having our question and answer series with Pastor Orville Joseph. So until we see you at 6.30 this evening, happy Sabbath and God bless. And see you at 6.30.